Hello, welcome to this uh, next tutorial. It's not so much a tutorial as a bit of an explainer, really. Uh, I had a question from a lady in the chat, uh, Zizi, I think her name is. Sorry if I've butchered that. Um, about height and normal maps, and what's the difference between the two. So I thought I'd just take a few minutes to uh, explain that. So we'll go through height first, and I've got uh, three, uh, sorry, four. <laughs> um, planes here of polygons each with different levels of polygons in it uh, you see that uh, if I come up here and slide to the bottom of my uh, preferences here and turn on the mesh you see this one is just one polygon uh, this one is uh, I think what's that 16 this one's 256 and this one's 4096. I've just labelled the materials appropriately. So, a height map will actually displace your map. It's like a displacement map. Um, I find them, the terms a bit interchangeable. I'm not entirely sure they are completely, but somebody will tell me uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sure. So, the map is dependent, or the results of the map are dependent upon how many polygons are in your model and I'll just demonstrate that so if I add a fill layer here and I'll just turn off everything but height by pressing the alt key and then height and then I'm going to drag this Gaussian noise in okay so we can see that on our, our one uh, polygon plane here and it's just flat there's nothing going on nothing's moving and that's because it's only got four vertices and it's rather dependent upon how many vertices you have uh, if I right click and instance this I'm going to do this sort of one by one and put it over to the 16 polygon map uh, you'll see that it actually displaces the mesh not very well and that's because it's only got 16 you know uh, 16 polygons to work with so it's not going to do very much and if I instance this again whoops where's instance gone there it is to the 256 you'll see we get a better result but it's still jagged and you know not very nice uh, but if we instance this to the 4096 there we go you'll see you'll get a nice sort of smoothish uh, displacement but even this is jagged in places because um, yeah there's not enough polygons to make it particularly smooth now if uh, yeah, you add to this you can subdivide on the fly of course and uh, we can do that if we go to our uh, shader settings here and in the tessellation and displacement area uh, which we can enable or disable as we want uh, we can change the height that it's going to display so I have quite a low value here so you can really change that up to you know get an effect you want uh, but down here we have the subdivision count and we can subdivide hit this and you'll see as I'm subdividing it especially the 1 and the 16 polygon they're flickering because it's calculating those extra vertices on the fly so if I go up to uh, well let's make it four to start with there we go now the single polygon is displacing a little the uh, 16 polygon is displacing uh, better the 256 is better as well again it looks pretty much like the 4096 used to look now you'll see the 4096 looks really 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 smooth so I would use a height map personally uh, if I actually want to get the mesh to move but I generally don't use them because it involves a large amount of polygons to get a good result uh, which is then an overhead on your machine which then could slow down whatever you're trying to do whether you're rendering uh, or whether you're animating or anything you know uh, that causes you know the re a re-render um, 
in my personal experience when I've rendered still images um, using displacement maps um, and subdivided enough to get to the level I want it it slows it down really <laughs> quite a lot so it's something I uh, don't personally do very often uh, I'm aware of it I know how it works roughly uh, but it's not something I you know actually do so that's a uh, height stroke displacement map um, now the next thing we'll look at is the normal map um, so we'll start that in the in the next section so I'll talk to you then okay so uh, a height map is different to a normal map in that it doesn't actually displace the surface so a height map will displace the surface but you need a lot of polygons for it the normal map will not displace the surface and it doesn't matter how many polygons you have you could have one polygon a hundred polygons a thousand polygons it makes no difference uh, I'll just demonstrate that by creating a fill layer alt click on normal just so I've got a normal map in there and if I go into my textures bin uh, we should find down here some normal stamps there we go uh, let's pick this one that's quite fancy okay so that's kind of a normal map which fakes a handle so you could stamp that onto a door you know onto a car door looks like maybe um, and it will sell that illusion and from this angle it looks all right but you know if I come to here you'll see it's not moving it's just surface level detail and it's used to um, allow you to create a low poly model but add some quite fine detail to it without having an enormous amount of geometry and just to sort of prove that if I right click and instance this across all of my little models here you'll see that regardless of how much geometry I've got Let's just turn that overlay off for a moment there we go it makes no difference they're all exactly the same so there's no need to have loads of geometry to get um, a nice result so you see it as I say a lot in video games in some animations I've seen it um, you know your eye gets used to it after a while um, you might be running down like a sci-fi corridor and see lots of grates and buttons and things um, but because you're running down it you know it's all a bit of a blur it sells the illusion um, but if you actually stop and look you'll see that you know that grate is flat you know that button is flat it's just a way of having a, a really low poly model you know made to look real by adding nice little details through these normal maps um, there is another uh, map called a bump map which is uh, kind of the older version of the normal map it's just a black and white uh, or grey scale image um, which is used to generate surface data like this um, it looks like a height map but it's not a height map it's a bump map <laughs> I hope that makes sense anyway the reason I was showing how to turn a height map into a, a normal map is because yeah outside of these lovely um, yeah, hard surface stamps that uh, I got with uh, substance um, I couldn't find an awful lot of stuff out there uh, so what I wanted to do was make my own using substance painter um, and I found that you know technique and because I thought that uh, you know it was useful and because I think it's kind of hidden in that uh, that video in the next section I'm going to, just going to explain the process uh, on its own so I'll talk to you then okay so let's uh, clear this out there we go so what I want to do is create a height map and then convert it into a normal map and I'm going to do it on the 4096 so I can get a good view of what it's going to do so basically with this technique what I can do uh, is use any of our um, 
textures in here grayscale you know ones that I might use for uh, a height map or some sort of detail and you know just use it basically uh, so where are we I want a noise of some description let's want some kind of spotty but not too ah there we go perfect so let me just shut off all these other ones so alt and click height now because I'm doing it with this technique in mind I'm going to do this by adding a layer under here a fill and this fill is going to provide my height information so if I drop that in there you'll see that's what we get so it's not exactly what I want uh, so what I'm going to do is invert it and then in the parameters under uh, displacement uh, I'm going to put the scale down to something a little bit more sensible so 0.001 there we go so now we're working with kind of surface detail and it's important to me that it is surface because you know a um, a normal map isn't going to sell anything other than surface detail sorry I'm trying to get a uh, a good kind of number that's too much so let's try a little lower is that doing anything yes it is okay so that looks okay um, but if I wanted that as a normal map uh, I could either rely on the export to give it to me because it will uh, or I could convert it in the application so I'm just going to copy this uh, where's copy it's here somewhere there we are onto our uh, texture with one piece on it and as you can see there's no displacement at all it's just kind of surface detail so to convert this to a normal map what I need to do is select the layer right click and add a filter and then click on the filter and pick height to normal and you'll see that changed immediately because it's showing both our height map and our normal map together and I only want it to show one or the other uh, so I only want it to show the height so I'm going to switch my channel over to height and in the uh, layer strength mix number I'm going to turn that down to zero so when I go back to our material whoops that's not what I want to do that's what I want to do now I'm only seeing our normal map okay let's confirm that by having a look at the height there's nothing in it and our normal there is so in the height to normal uh, we have some options so we've got the si surface size in centimeters uh, well I happen to know this is a hundred centimeters because it's a one meter um, cube actually it might be a two meter cube off the top of my head not two thousand crumbs come on John sort your life out I still type two thousand something gets stuck in my head it has trouble getting out sometimes and the height depth we can set so this is set as 16 centimeters which is too much so I'm going to set that right down maybe even to below a centimeter so 0.5 so that gives me a good normal map which is just going to give me nice surface information and there we have it so that's how you convert a height map into a normal map and you know as I said any of these will, will work with this technique if I pop this one in for example we'll get a similar one we get a nice kind of broken uh, plaster effect if you like uh, what's this one let's have a look and we have some cracks and of course within here I can tile it whoops not that much and we can do all sorts of things and we get a nice normal map out of it <coughs> uh, what else would be interesting to look at um, it's generally I like it for sort of breaking up sort of 
you know small details if you like um, so basically anything you like uh, just you know work as you as you do got a pebbles one here this is quite handy because it gives you a nice kind of uh, pebbly kind of effect which you could build uh, a texture upon yeah good stuff so uh, that's it really um, the only thing I would say is that you're not limited to a single fill layer here so I can add an additional fill layer to this and drop it below the height to normal and if I added say I don't know that's the one I've got isn't it so let's add this one here whoops where's height there it is so I'll click on height there so now I'm just really seeing uh, the top one so if I turn that off probably won't see much I know we are seeing much because it's uh, it's on a different mixing level if I go to height you'll see it's L dodge so it's combined them together essentially so you can combine noises and shapes and all sorts to get you know different effects out you're not limited to a single texture so I hope that was interesting uh, I hope it was useful if you have any questions please ask me uh, in the um, in the comments section so I'll talk to you again soon